What is up, watch fam? Happy Wednesday, and welcome to this week's collection review. I am Christian from Theo and Harris, uh, and today we're going to be reviewing a, a really uh, awesome, versatile collection uh, from a 30-year-old watch collector named Freddy. So let's do it. Okay, uh, but before we jump in, we'll do a quick wristwatch check. I am wearing uh, a watch that I guess I never thought I would ever own uh, at a certain point. You know, I was so into watches and so into the top three brands, uh, and I just thought that was, you know, for a different lifetime. Uh, but I didn't even realize at the time, you know, that, that vintage, you know, watches from Patek Philippe, Asher and Constantine, etc., you know, could be had for relatively, you know, affordable, relatively affordable prices, of course. It's not necessarily affordable, but relatively. So this is a three-hand uh, Vacheron Constantine uh, yellow gold dress watch, uh, non-luminous style, kind of like, yeah, I guess, sick stick or dagger hands. Uh, it's beautiful, straight lugs and all. Uh, I think it has a little bit of sportiness to it, uh, super clean, you know, white-ish silver dial. Uh, I don't know, when I was able to own this watch, it was, it was kind of like a... I don't know, Theo Harris is a thing now kind of moment. You know what I mean? It was one of those like, oh, wow, I actually do this for a living and this is awesome. I get to play with the coolest watches ever. So that's that's my little passionate rant. Uh, this watch was listed for sale yesterday on TheoHarris.com. I have no idea, of course, if it's still for sale or not. Someone could have snagged it yesterday. But even if they did, uh, go over to TheoHarris.com right after this video uh, to look at the photos because Anna did a wonderful job taking them. Uh, they're very truthful and raw. And who wouldn't want a closer look at this Vacheron Constantine? Okay, so let's get into Freddy's collection. I think first it's appropriate to kind of lay the foundation uh, that he explained to me in the beginning of his email uh, that he, he needs versatile watches. So he works as a banker uh, and every day he's kind of in that, you know, formal-ish attire. Uh, you know, whether that's an Oxford or a dress shirt. I don't think he wears a suit and tie, but still a formal enough environment where uh, a little bit more of a refined watch uh, is probably more, you know, suitable and respectable. Uh, it just so happens that he also happens to love that style of watches. So I'm glad that you're not being forced into, you know, a watch genre. I think that's awful. You know, I hate when I go to a wedding uh, and there are guys that like just should not be wearing suits because they hate it and they bought awful suits because they don't care about I Just look good, you know, just look clean and, and good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, so I'm glad that you're not uh, being forced into more formal watches. So now let's go into your collecting history and where, where you've been and, and where you're going. Uh, number one, you picked up a Tissot Visidate, which is an absolutely classic watch with great heritage. Uh, does it look just like the old Visidates, the original ones? No, uh, but fundamentally or foundationally or whatever, uh, they're still very, very similar. Clean, classic, you know, dials, uh, not busy at all, uh, and at a relatively affordable price point. You know, back then they were significantly less expensive than the other brands, uh, you know, like Omega, I would imagine. But then even, you know, going way up, uh, it was more of a, an every man's watch. Uh, of course, they did make some crazy sh too with Omega at a relatively affordable price in the market. You know, it was a bit more of an every man's watch uh, than so many of the other brands. And they've still managed to kind of keep that heart you know, and I really, really appreciate that. This watch, in my experience, has gotten a tremendous amount of people that I talk to on a daily basis into watches. Uh, I know dealers that started with Tissot Visso dates. So, you know, it is certainly no shame in starting at, at that affordable, really clean, mechanical, you know, point. Props to you uh, for not buying a shit, you know, watch to start off with. Your next watch was something that is is quite interesting. Uh, you stayed in that relative world of affordable, you know, mechanical watches with a Hamilton Khaki Navy Pioneer, which is a long name. Um, but I really respect, you know, the the extra depth that you, um, you know, found in it. That it it, it bears remarkable resemblance to, to the Hamilton Marine Chronometer from the '40s. Props. I mean, I've seen that watch, and Hamilton representatives have showed me that watch several times, and that's new knowledge to me. No one's ever showed me that, you know, that that resemblance, that heritage, uh, and I, I probably never would have seen it. I don't deal in Hamilton every day, or even every other day, you know. I don't deal in Hamilton once a week, uh, but, but that extra level is major props to Hamilton, and the fact that I don't know that, you know, of course, shame on me, but really shame on Hamilton because they should really communicate that more. Um, so no, I mean, you didn't really take a big jump or you didn't go crazy in watches. You bought something that looked very similar to your first watch. Um, of course, you took a little bit of a daring move on the on the wire lugs, which I really, really enjoy. 
Uh, but still, I mean, you're 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 collecting. I, I could see that you're building a collection. You're trying to figure out where your style is, uh, and you bought another objectively good value watch. Uh, so so props. Okay, next you went with a Mont Blanc, uh, a classic, a star two-tone, which is an interesting watch because Mont Blanc is such a difficult brand to read uh, and to decide whether or not like the watch fam respects. Uh, I don't have to give my endorsement to an entire brand to like some of their watches. I know that some people are just so bogged down by, you know, one uh, one fault or, or five faults that they they, were, they fail to see the diamonds in the rough. I'm not like that. I actually like this watch quite a bit. I think that the, the case is a classic design, nothing crazy, but this two tone is done beautifully. I mean, that is a classic, classic configuration and really rare. Like that wasn't a thing that everyone did back in the you know 40s and 50s or even I think way even beyond that. This is a hot horology, you know, Patek Philippe, Vacheron Constantine kind of like you know style this difference in the metals, the lugs in the case, and now Mont Blanc did it. That's really cool. I mean, it's it's not as hard or as impressive to copy the design of a dial. You know, I, I like it. You know, I like when modern brands are inspired by the past, but, you know, the case material, it's a rare little touch. Uh, Two-tone is usually not done like that, you know, so big props to Mont Blanc for that, you know, interesting little, uh, you know, variable. What I really like about this watch, you know, in respect to your collection, uh, is this was the first watch I believe that you owned that you know woke you up to saying, "Yeah, I really like airing on the side of dress." You know, it's not just casual, it's not just middle of the line. You know, it, I really do enjoy dress watches, refined pieces, which most people have a hard time, you know, wearing. Uh, at least that I've I've found that anecdotally, that most people are just much more comfortable with with a sports watch that kind of makes them feel masculine. Not that I'm making any judgment calls on those people; it's just a reality. Uh, so, as someone who really likes dress watches, big props. Uh, you know, you and I are kind of, I guess, kindred spirits uh, in in that way. Brega numerals, two tone cases. Uh, uh, and, you know, white, I think that's a textured dial. Good stuff, really, really cool stuff. Your next watch, you stepped it up a little bit in complications. You went with a bit more of a sports watch, but still in a very, very refined, you know, kind of dressy way. Uh, you went with a long jeans from the Master Collection. Triple calendar chronograph moon phase. I mean, that's a pretty complicated watch. Uh, I really do like the dials on these. I've seen them a bunch of times. They're like that textured kind of dial. Uh, it's almost honeycomb-ish. I really, really enjoy it. Uh, moon phase complications are beautiful. That's what made you buy this watch. I think it's a little bit heavy on the left side of the dial. Uh, I don't think the balance is perfect on it, but uh, still, I'm not sure if you bought it pretty owned or vintage or what you paid, uh, but I know I've seen these watches at a price point that does represent a lot of value. So so all in all, although it's not a perfect watch, I still uh, you know do think that it was a good call uh, and it helped you, although keep that dress vein, uh, expand a little bit into complications and where you're comfortable. Uh, it's the next watch that I'm glad that you went for, uh, really glad it, it's this first step into, you know, real more expensive or actually comparably priced, but more like historically luxurious brand. You went with Rolex, you know, you bought a Datejust uh, and a beautiful one at that. A black dial reference 16,200 with a smooth bezel and a Jubilee bracelet. Love this thing, man. Uh, I know how much you love the Datejust. Uh, you know, you explained in your email that you and I see very much so eye to eye uh, on the versatility, on the, the quality of construction, um, on the overall ability uh, to, I know this is gonna sound weird, but ad admire in your like free time, you know, it's just a watch that hits you at a gut level because maybe it's so simple, you know, because it doesn't try to impress any you, but it clearly is, you know, it's hard to it's hard to explain. I've got such a kind of deep relationship with the day just. Uh, so wonderful watch. But you now you want to go and get another date just, uh, you know, which is which is hysterical. I know plenty of people that own like four, are they four or five date just. They own two or three guys that own like four date just, uh, and they just they're all different, all different variations, and they absolutely love them. I, am I a guy that's gonna that's gonna buy two or three of the same watch? I don't think so. Although I, I although I I could probably own two date just. I think I could. I would. I have my blue. Uh, I, I could definitely do a gold. My dad has a gold. Uh, I saw, yeah, they're a they're wide boy. I don't have a wide boy. I, they're, they're, I think it's obvious that I like the day chest. Uh, but but back to back to Freddie. Um, 
So you want to buy this watch, this this next watch, you know, for the the bezel. You, you want the fluted bezel, um, and you know you're de- just debating, you know, whether to go modern like you did or go vintage. Uh, my answer is 100% go vintage. I think that you are underrepresented in vintage. I think it's obvious you respect and really value heritage, uh, which you've mentioned several times throughout your collection. Uh, so I think that it's important that you that you give it a shot. I think you're going to be shocked by how, although in small details different a 1601 is uh, than, a, than a 90s day just. It just has a lot more charm. Uh, I know that's very subjective, but I think that you'll experience uh, the similar kind of experience that I have. It's not a hard sell for me on the date just. I've been very openly passionate about it in the past, uh, and, and I'm glad that we, that we share that. I mean, I've sourced, I don't know, I, I, Dozens, I mean, maybe over a hundred date just, and it's for really good reason. On a suede strap, it's a it's a casual watch that you can wear, you know, in the fall, and a, you know, like I said, t-shirt and jeans, you know, or on a crocodile or on a court event, it's the perfect dress watch. I, I don't know, I mean, it was my first watch. It's a watch I've spent the most time with out of anything. Uh, it's a watch I've sourced. Over a hundred of for clients. It's a watch I list on the watch shop, uh, you know, every week. Uh, so once again, I mean, you know, maybe asking me about the date just world is a little bit, you know, a little bit biased. Um, but I'm, but I'm glad that we do share that appreciation uh, and experience. Uh, for that watch. But if you are set on getting another Datejust, which it kind of seems like you are, and I know you want to do a silver dial, uh, it, it would be much more effective for you to shoot me an email, uh, Freddie, at info at uh, because that way I could I could show you examples. You know, I can't just say, oh, go get a silver XYZ Datejust. It's, it's you know, the vintage market that somehow you know it works. Sure, you can hold out for something for one, two, three, four, five months and wait for it to come along. Uh, but it would be much more effective if I think I just you know sent you photos as things came in and, and things that I found. Uh, that's probably the best way for you to get uh, your you know dream uh, vintage fluted bezel uh, day just. But if you want to go a more cost effective route, uh, I think that you could also just get a white cold bezel for your day just and swap them out every month or whatever, or every whenever the hell you want. Uh, I can't imagine it's going to be too expensive, a couple hundred dollars. Uh, I, maybe I'm underestimating it, but I, I can't I can't see it reaching a thousand dollars. I think it's going to be way less than that. Uh, so I think that's a reasonable option. I know it's not the ideal situation, uh, but because I know that you're going to keep wanting to buy watches, being able to have that three or four grand saved uh, and to move on to another piece, I know is extremely important. Uh, and on that note, try Glassfoot Original. Uh, you didn't mention them. Uh, you, you haven't gone to that kind of world of you know watchmaking yet into this like truly finely finished, but it's still affordable world. But I really think you should try a Senator 60s. They're really good watches. I dove into them a little bit more on Monday when we did a video on a best uh, everyday watch under $7,500. Uh, and that watch definitely qualifies in that world. You know, in that $6,000 range, these watches are just in steel. These dials are magnificent. You know, they're they're convex. They have this beautiful sunburst. The movements are just finished to the nines. I really do think that because you uh, enjoy the dress world so much, you really should give those guys a shot. Uh, but that's it. That's my recommendation. Consider the bezel and really consider Glasshood Original uh, moving forward, uh, particularly the Senator 60s. I think you'll love it. So that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching this collection review. Thank you, Freddie, for sending it in. Uh, you've got awesome taste. I really admire what you prioritize in your watch collection. Uh, and that's it. Follow us on Instagram if you don't already at Theo and Harris and give us a like if you enjoyed my video or Freddie's collection uh, or any of the watches like the video for any reason you can imagine. (laughs) Thanks so much, guys. See you tomorrow.